What up, y'all? It's your guy Dawson from D&D TV. Thank you for rating, commenting, and subscribing. Everybody who's donated, those of y'all who will, all that information is in the description box below. Also, go over to my other YouTube channel, Dawson Speak TV. Make sure you subscribe over there. And again, I got to give a special shout out to everybody who's donated. You all have been showing up and showing out, and I appreciate that so much. Now, let's get into the story. All right, now you all remember a couple of months ago, I did a video about a pastor out in Alabama. He had a church in two locations, one in Monroeville, which is in Monroe County, and Atmore, which is in Escambia County. And this pastor was indicted by a grand jury at that time, it was back in February, on two counts of sodomy, and he was arrested. Now, I did the video, and a lot of you came to this show and subscribed, and many of you hit me up in my inbox and sent emails about this particular topic and I just waited a little bit because I knew that more charges would come and I'm glad I waited because the pastor now has new charges now I'm going to let you all watch this video to refresh your memory on this case then I will be back with the rest of my commentary and you all know me I'm Dawson and do I even have to say it because y'all know I'm not gonna hold back watch this video breaking news a pastor from Monroeville was arrested today and charged with sodomy the Monroe County Sheriff's Office says Gerald Gibbs was indicted by a grand jury last week. He was arrested by Monroeville police. The 47-year-old faces two counts of second-degree sodomy. He's pastor at Call to Life Apost Apostolic Church. All right, y'all, let's go in. Now, there is Pastor Jermaine Gibbs there with his wife, co-pastor. She's a co-pastor, y'all. Co-pastor Kawan Gibbs. Now, on the last video, I had some very choice words for co-pastor Kawan. And, you know, I hate to tell y'all, in this video, I have some more things I'm going to say to her as well. And I know they're listening because it got back to me. But let me start with this. Local charges are still pending the outcome of an investigation of the allegations of a Monroe apostle who also has a Atmore church committed sexual offense against at least one child there. But that's not the case in the Apostles home county. According to sources in Monroeville, Monroe County Sheriff's Office investigators arrested Apostle Gerald Gibbs, 47 years old, about three weeks ago they arrested him, you all, on warrants accusing him of four more counts of first degree sodomy and two more counts of second degree sodomy. Take a breath. <laughs> And y'all come over here and question the integrity of my platform. <laughs> now let's count. Simple math here. Simple math. In February, he had two counts of sodomy. And then now he has four counts of first degree sodomy. So two plus four. And then he has two counts of second degree sodomy. And so two plus four plus two. Simple math. That's eight. And eight is the number of what? New beginnings. <laughs> and it is a new beginning for the people in Monroeville and Atmore. It's a new beginning because you all are going to start paying attention to these people who get up in your pulpits, your educational institutions, these people who abuse power and they abuse children, and many of them hide behind religion. And it's not just for Atmore and in Monroeville, it's all around the United States because this is not the only apostle or preacher or teacher who's doing this. Or politician. You can look at it. It's all around. That all oh, you know. Their lives matter. And this matters. And that. Well the children's lives matter too. Nobody don't say nothing about the children. But the children do grow up. And these young boys become men. And these young girls become women. And then you all marry him. And wonder why you have all these problems. Why he treat me like that. Why she does this. Why she can't stay committed to me. I give her everything. But she cheated on me. Y'all don't really want to get to the root of the problem with what happened to some of these kids. Because it's so easy for many of you all in religious institutions, mosque center synagogues, to say, oh, well, you know, let God do it. Or, oh, you know, you know, just do, just let's not talk about it. No, we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about it. It's a new beginning. It's a new time. And I'm sorry for many of you that when things happened to you maybe 10, 20, 30 years ago, and some of you were in your 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, on up, I get emails from everybody, and nobody did anything when you told people things happened to you. So in many of you, in your minds, you think when I come with these stories and other vloggers come with stories like this, oh, well, the children will get over it. Oh, well, he'll get over it oh, because they told you to get over it. 
And my question to you all, did you really get over it? Being molested, being abused at a young age, and you writing me in your, your 60s, and your fifth old enough to be my mom and my dad? Because I have the boldness. Other YouTubers have the boldness to talk about it, to hold these pastors accountable, to hold these leaders accountable, to hold these teachers and these educational institutions accountable, to hold these political figures accountable when they abuse their power. We have the boldness to speak to it. That's why y'all come over here. Now, let me go on. <laughs> I had to get that out. Now, Apostle Gibbs is free, and he had total bonds that equaled up to $750,000. Now, let's dissect this. Now, their each uh, first-degree sodomy charge was $150,000 each, and every second-degree sodomy charge was $75,000. And, of course... Somebody came up and they posted on his behalf and y'all know it was co-pastor co Kawan and maybe some of the members as well. They could not let the pastor stay in jail, even though the grand jury had already indicted the pastor. So when I'm reporting this story to y'all, it's this is not on suspicion. The pastor confessed to it. They got him on audio. They got text messages that was sent to him and one of the victims. Come on, I'm privy to a lot of this stuff. They know the pastor did this. The people in the community know. His wife knows that he did do this. He confessed to it. And now these new charges in another county are coming up. Like I knew they would. Now, many of the people in Atmore and in Monroeville, some of the church people there, are now on the victim's side since more children have started to come out and all of this information has surfaced uh, with these other uh, charges that the pastor has. You know, I've been able to communicate with a lot of people who are close to this case, and I have had the privilege of communicating with one of the victims who uh, was sexually assaulted by the pastor, and I've gotten some information a lot of of it I won't reveal here because they're still going through court but according to the victim during the whole pandemic you know the pastor created this private YouTube page so he could preach you know and still get preached to some of the members who are still a part of his church and not only that it was reported to me by you know the victim that the pastor also has uh, money laundering charges too and this happened because you know allegedly this was reported to me the police raided the church and when they raided the church they found money because the pastor previously had went to the bank and he took a lot of the money out, uh, most of the money out of the bank and he hid it in the church so when the police went to the church they found money and they also found something else that the victim told me in the church oh god <laughs> Yo, when I heard this, I, I just, I, I couldn't even look at the computer anymore. Now, you know, allegedly, not only did they find money in the church, because the pastor took all the money out the bank, they also found lubrication in the church as well. Sex lube. Take a breath, y'all. <laughs> Help me, Jesus. This ain't no laughing matter. I said, wait a minute now, now you mean to talk, maybe it wasn't no sex lube, you know, maybe it was olive oil, you sure it wasn't no olive oil of that being there about, you know, five, ten years, it just got a little, you know, little jelly-like stale, you know, maybe it was some olive oil they put in, you know, one of them little uh, Tupperware, you know, containers, you know, maybe that, that's what it was. The victim said no. <laughs> they found lubrication in the church, allegedly. Y'all better leave me alone, I can't make this stuff up. Jesus. Somebody tell me why they got lubrication in the church, allegedly. <laughs> Y'all, I can't make this stuff up. I said, this man, are you serious? Now, let me tell y'all something. Now, this was reported to me by one of the victims. And the victim, I, you know, he released a statement and told me that I could read it. And I will read that uh, towards the end of this. This, it's funny, but you all, with all of the stories that are coming out and the stories that have happened years ago, and it's many of them that are happening now, with situations just like this, where we have seen people who have gotten life sentences, those pastors in Toledo, Ohio, many people could not believe that they were in the church doing that with a young girl, that they were sex trafficking. And there are other people who've come out with their stories, and the saints don't believe it. People in the community don't believe it. Oh, touch not my anointing. No, no, no. 
but the pastor touching y'all, which y'all think is olive oil, but allegedly it might be some some uh, KY jelly. <laughs> Rubbing it all on your face and on your belly. Talking about something the Lord let the Lord have his way. No, you better get that man hand up off of you. Look here. Now, I really want the people who watch my show to know we're moving forward. And I'm not going to hold back when situations like this come forward. You know, I have a lot of people who reach out to me. A lot of the victims when I do these cases. On that Toledo, Ohio case, the young girl who was sexually trafficked there, one of the victims reached out to me and she thanked me for the story. She was surprised that somebody took it up. And I, you know, I, I don't put a lot of that out there because I know that people wonder, well, why you do what you do, Dawson? What you trying to do? And I'm going to tell you like they tell you at the court. On Dawson Denise. And Dawson Speak TV and Denise have her channel over there. Denise Listens. Y'all make sure y'all go over there. Shameless plug over there and support Denise Listens. On our channels, we who labor here seek only the truth. Just like the people in court. And there's no way that these people in religious institutions, in educational institutions, people who are political figures, they abuse their power and we cannot hold them accountable, especially when it comes to our children. And as I said before, I'm sorry, nobody ain't do it for y'all when y'all were little, but it's a new day now. Ain't the number of new beginnings, new beginnings. It's a new time. We standing up. We not holding back. Now, when the victim told me that, I just said, man, you know, this is just completely sad. And then another person who is, you know, you know, related to, you know, one of the, you know, some people in the church. Uh, told me, said, look, you know, the first lady, Pastor Co, Pastor Kawan, had a daycare years ago, and I used to let my child go to that daycare. And it just, she said, with all of this stuff that's coming out, you know, in the community about this pastor, it makes me wonder, did something happen to my child? You know, I mean, people are, you know, people are wondering now. Now, I know when I do stuff like this, you know, I, you know, I get all the naysayers and I appreciate it. And I, I want y'all to come because, you, know, you know, we ain't going to stop supporting, you know, taking care of the kids. That's what we do over here. But one thing we are going to do is make sure that you all are not so heavenly minded that you're no earthly good. That when it comes to your life, your family life, and especially your children, that you're so your head is so stuck up in the cloud that you don't even know what's going on around you. And my thing to you all is I tell all of my subscribers, people who watch this show, those who view, uh, the, all of you who share to your family members and friends, people, so many people hit me up and I appreciate it. But the one thing I want you all to take from these videos and the, this show is to watch out for yourself. Look out for yourself. And people say, well, why do you always come so hard when it comes to church? Because when people go to these churches and other relig religious organizations, your heart is open. Your defense is down. You think that everybody in there has, you know, everybody has a common good. We're here to serve God. We're here to serve our creator. We're here to do good in the earth. And if I do good to this brother and this sister, they're going to do good to me. And I respect their family. And you go in there with an open and willing heart. You go in there. You know, naive, pretty much. Many of you all do. Thinking that everybody is going to live by what they read in sacred texts. You go in there with that. And then when you get there and find that, the, man, this is just the, this is just the den of iniquity. Look at all these people in here. I came here to serve the Lord. I didn't come here for this. I came here because I thought this was a good church and I could worship and get a word. And, you know, I didn't come here to have somebody come after my wife or go after you. They going after your husband or your children. Oh, it happens. People in these churches, not all of them, but some. It's not all churches, but some people and some of you are in me. Dawson, they were trying to hit on me. Oh, I, I went to the church, you know, just to help. I didn't know married men started hitting on me. Some of the women started. Hit. Come on, y'all. This stuff happens. Got prophetess in the church lying about their sexuality. Tell me something, you free and want all the women to come on a women's retreat. Brother Simo, you going to let your wife go on the, on the women's retreat this year? Please let Sister Cheryl go. Let Sister Cheryl go on the women's retreat. And you let your wife go on the women's retreat only to find out she'd have treated the women's retreat. Y'all better listen to me. Y'all know I'm talking good up in here. <laughs> come on, this stuff happens. Going on the men's retreat. Come on, get out of here, man. Some of these people ain't no good. Now, look here. Now, let me say this. Co-pastor Kawan, his wife, 
I want to say this because it was reported to me that you said that you are obligated to stand by your husband. And, you know, um, I, I hear you on that. But let me tell you, when you know the truth that your husband has done this to these young boys and more cases are coming out and they are showing you proof, it's almost like you're just as guilty as he is. Because let me uh, refresh all of y'all memories and let me tell you something because I know y'all watch my videos. There was another pastor's wife who stood by her husband through all of his ordeals and when she found out that it was true now she is serving close to two years in prison and that is Laura Lloyd Jenkins what the the what the pastor's wife up in Toledo Ohio now all of those pastors involved are serving time and though their wives are too and one of the pastor's daughter so when y'all say, I got to stand by my husband, I got to stand by my wife, and you know they've done stuff, you better watch what you're doing. You better watch. Because this is sad. It is sad that you all still took preaching engagements after the pastor got arrested in February. And you knew it was true then. Now, I'm off of this subject, but I want to read, you know, a statement from the victim because I, I asked if there was anything that he wanted to say, one of the victims, and he said, yes, I could read this statement. And it reads as follows. All of this stemmed from him not being able to apologize to me because initially, that's all I asked for. His pride and the lies he told caused all of this. I loved him like a father but I couldn't keep sacrificing my happiness and my sanity because he couldn't control his flesh. Respecting the position God gave man is not an excuse to do dirt behind the shade of the pulpit. Now that's what the victim said. Now I'm going to let you all go off in the comments, say whatever you all want to say. I'm done with this topic. Keep the conversation going. Let me know your thoughts on this. And until next time, it's your guy Dawson. You take care of yourself and each other. And in this particular case with Apostle Gerald Germains Gibbs, I hope that justice is served and that he does spend time in prison. Now that's my thought. Let me know yours. Peace. Oh, also, everyone, go over to Denise's new channel. My uh, co-host Denise has her new channel. It's called Denise Listens. Go over there and see her. She's all around town doing all types of stuff, having fun. Please go over there and subscribe to her page. Denise is not a church girl, so please don't go over there throwing all them scriptures and stuff at her because you will be sadly disappointed and you might get cussed out in the process. I'm just saying, Denise lives her life and have fun, and I think you all will enjoy her show. Please go over there and support. Until next time, it's your guy Dawson. Take care of yourself and each other. Love you all so much. Peace.